I'm telling you, it, it's going to be approved. And I, I can't give you the exact date, but my guess is, you know, early January. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest, Mark Yusko, talks about the latest crypto and stocks rally and why he believes that the risk assets like Bitcoin are set for a longer bull run. If you're as excited about exploring the fascinating world of cryptocurrencies as we are, hit that subscribe button now. Don't miss out on our insightful discussions, market updates, and game-changing insights that could potentially shape your financial future. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you find our content valuable. Your support fuels our passion to keep delivering top-notch videos. And hey, why not spread the knowledge? Share our videos with your crypto curious friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. Well, you know how you know what I think about these numbers. I think they're all all bogus because they're just made up, right? I mean, they're all the birth death ratio. They've all got these seasonal adjustments. I said What's really important to me is what they revised last month and the previous two months, because no one looks at the revisions. They only talk about the number. And so I, I, I think if you, if you go back and you look like over the last year, it was like a third of the reported jobs vanished in the revisions. So they, they, they weren't really there. I mean, it's like a tree falling in the forest. If, if there's no one there to hear it, it, it didn't happen. If, if the job really didn't exist, just because you said it did, it's like when you, you put a, a big number on the first estimate of GDP and then you revise it down, like, well, it was never the high number. It, it's the actual number. Or ver if you go the other way, right? If, if you do, you know, small and you build up. So the revisions are, are I think, the interesting thing. But I... I just, I still don't understand in a world where we track every human being to within inches based on this thing. And we know exactly when you get paid and how much you get paid and how much taxes you pay and payroll taxes. We should know how many people are employed or not employed. That, that seems like a really easy number. We shouldn't have to use, you know, 50 year old algorithm. I tend to agree with you on that as well. I'm not 100% sure why. It feels just like a little bit of a uh, anachronistic way of, of looking at things, but it's, it's, it's look, the, 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 the institutional bias is we've always done it that way. Like, like why does retail sales not include population growth? Mm. That, that's just, that's insane. If there are more people, they will buy more stuff. And since the population only goes up, it's, it's not like it's super, you know, you can say, well, it's so volatile, but it's not. I mean, there's net immigration all the time. And it's so, but, but they, they, for whatever reason, that, that data series doesn't use that. And there are all kinds of little anachronistic things that just don't make sense. Well, it's like reporting CPI net of food and energy. Like, but aren't, Food and energy? Yields have moved up on the long end. That's tightened financial conditions for everyone. You're starting to see the beginning signs of some sort of landing here, right? Which is employment starting to weaken and bonds starting to get bid. I mean, that's right. I, uh, yeah, that's sort of it's, confirmatory. It's, 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 we've talked about this actually for, for a long time. I and mean, we've actually been doing this for a reasonably long time now. And yeah. um, the thing that I think is interesting is we we created QE when I say we meaning they so they the Fed and you know again we, we, we all know well maybe we don't all know but, but you know the Fed was created to support the banks right it's a private corporation that supports its members which happen to be the banks and that's what central banks do and they're the lender of last resort to those banks to make sure that, that they can maximize their profits. And so when, when they cut interest rates to zero and started buying bonds, what were they doing? They were essentially bailing out the banking mistakes of the global financial crisis, right? The banks vaporized their balance sheets, right? Totally destroyed their balance sheets by over levering. And again, leverage is just a tool. It's not, it's not inherently evil, but 
as you know, the fate, you know, the great Howard Marks says so eloquently, leverage can never make a bad investment good. Can't, right? It can and often does, unfortunately, make a good investment bad because you're forced to sell at the wrong time and your equity disappears. So like if you buy a house for cash and the price goes up 10%, you make 10%. That price goes down 10%, you, make, you lose 10%. But no one can take it from you because there's no liability. It's yours. If you buy for 20% down, 80% mortgage, four to one leverage, and the price goes up 10%, you don't make 10%, you make 50%. I love leverage. So let's do 10 to one. Let's put 10% down. Price goes up 10%. I made 100% on my equity. <gasps> the price goes down 10%. All your equity vanishes. All of it. So all of the bank equity vanished. I mean, I, I think I've told the story on the show. You know, I was with uh, Chase Coleman in 2000. Nine, early 2009, right when QE started. And he crushed it in 2007, 2008. He short all the banks, short the financial companies, tunned it. I mean, the markets were down 52% peak to trough. They were up well uh, over that. And, but in 2009, market took off after Obama said, hey, buy stocks. We, we got your back on March 9th, 2009. And by you know this time, November of 2009, Chase was down like 10% and the market was up like 20%. And I walked in his office and he literally throws this, this thing at me. He said, look at this. I'm like, what is it, Chase? I mean, okay. He says, that's, that's Citigroup's balance sheet. They are bankrupt. Their liabilities exceed their assets. There's no way this stock should have any value. I've been short. I shorted it from $100 down to a dollar. Now it's five. And he said, and then it hit me. It's inconvenient for too many people for Citigroup to go to zero. Mm. And he said, I'm not short in banks anymore. And, and that epiphany, right, that they weren't going to let those banks go, right? There was no chance Goldman Sachs was going away. Now, Lehman, he could let that go because they didn't like the guy who ran it at all. Like, they really just didn't like him. Bear Stearns. They didn't like the way they were scalping, arbitra arbitraging certain certain markets. And the big guys were like, yeah, we could get rid of them. And then we would make all the money. So let them go. And JP Morgan is the bank where all the bad assets go to die. Where did Bear Stearns end up? Bear Stearns on Friday had a $10 stock value. It was going to make it. And on Sunday, it was declared dead and Jamie bought it for $2. Mm. What, 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 how, how, why? To your point, the moral hazard would have been, well, we can't, we can't, we have to let somebody go to, to show the others that they can't. Uh-uh. Basically, they handed those assets, then Washington Mutual, same thing. Washington Mutual, bunch of bad guys, Angelo Mozillo and, and the, the, bad, the bad mortgages, they're like... JP Morgan gets to buy them. And so they, they parse out the assets. And I, I think I also told you the story about, you know, they, they were going to shut down Morgan Stanley. Literally, they were going to absolve Morgan Stanley into Goldman Sachs. He got on an airplane and he flew to Japan and he got a handwritten check for $6 billion for 25% of the firm and saved the firm. Mm. And you're like, how do you know that? Like, Because a really close friend of mine was on the plane with him like held the check for $6 billion. Early investors, we sold most of what we had, not, you know, not at the peak because um, we were locked up for a little bit, but, but we, you know, did quite nicely, but we kept about a third and, and it's been painful watching it, it go down uh, when we, you know, think very highly of, of the business, but for all the reasons you just described, we are, are, are holding, uh, and, and believe, you know, we'll, we'll see those, those highs, um, you know, not tomorrow, but, but in the relatively near term. And that doesn't even include anything for, you know, what is coming, right? When the BlackRock ETF is approved and it's going to be approved, right? I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's going to be approved and I, I can't give you the exact date, but my guess is, you know, early January, um, 
Maybe they'll do it on the Feast of the Epiphany on January 6th. Who knows? Um, but uh, that, that's coming. And that, that's going to be big for Coinbase. And Coinbase, to your point, it is the institutional gold standard for an asset that, I mean, digital assets that are going to be part of every portfolio, right? The same way that there was a time when there were no stocks in institutional portfolios. It was all bonds. And then there was a time there were no hedge funds and venture capital and buyouts. There will be a time when everyone will have these assets and, and it's coming. And, and that's, and that's amazing. And, and congrats to, to Brian and the rest of the team um, for sticking with it and, and not backing down to, you know, the shakedowns from the three letter agency that I won't name. Um, and by the way, it's Sam Brannon. Brandon, so the the good Sam B, and I love the fact that we didn't talk about that other jerk uh, who who did uh, get found guilty on seven counts. Yeah, uh, you know, I intentionally didn't even bring it up because my attitude about this has been: I feel like it's in the past. I'm firmly looking forward towards the future here. Amen. I remain Amen. very optimistic about. So let's celebrate future. Sam so. Brandon, and let's be the owners of the picks and shovels in the general stores, and let's celebrate this you know, emerging technology wonder that it truly is, right? I mean, the ability to uh, record assets in perpetuity on an open, honest, transparent, you know, well, immutable ledger is awesome. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. And, and, you know, we are celebrating the 15th anniversary of, of that amazing vision you know, by Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he, she, they are. And we thank them and the original pioneers like Hal Finney, God rest his soul, and, and all the others um, that, that gave us this amazing gift that we could spend the rest of our careers, you know, working in, which is, is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Mark Yesko. If you enjoy this highlight video, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.